<laughs> that is so cool. That is so cool. Oh, we're going to be able to do so many things with this. Ooh, I hope this works. Yes. Yes. Ooh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking a new elevator design. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh, I love these elevators. The ones that are, you know, as accurate as possible to real life ones. Um, these are so much fun and I love building these. And if you've seen some of my previous videos on them, you know that they can be quite convoluted and, and large and resource uh, heavy. But have a look at this. Like, except for a fair amount of obsidian, the resources required to build this is fairly low, especially compared to the other designs. So, yeah, I really like this. And um, if you want to build it yourself, I'm about to show you how. All right, you want to start off three blocks below your floor level. But for the purposes of, uh, of this tutorial, I'm just going to build it on the flat level here. So you want four sticky pistons facing up, four slime blocks and then whatever block you're going to be using as the floor of your elevator. After that the points where we're going to power these pistons are going to be right here, here, two blocks above that and then one block above that one. So those are the four points. Now we want to power them in reverse, we want to unpower them in the reverse order that we power them. So we're actually going to power the top ones first in this order um, and then that will achieve what we're after. So we're just going to staircase down two and then we're going to bring this across two and then we're going to build three blocks across there like that. We're going to grab some slabs and place a couple of slabs like that. A repeater here set to two, a repeater here set to four and then redstone on everything else. So you'll see if we power this lever here it'll power this block first after two ticks it'll power this one after four ticks it'll power this one and then finally put another repeater here and that'll power it after another two ticks and that's literally all we need for the piston pistons to go up and down so let's have a look so that's up and that's down so now we've just got to work on the doors and the buttons and all the rest of it all right, we're going to work on the buttons next, but before we do, I'm just going to mark the floor level at the top and the bottom, so that we've got a reference there. Um, and you notice I'm using obsidian here, uh, and that's a requirement. Um, most of these obsidian have to be obsidian or a furnace or some other block that won't get stuck on these slime blocks. Um, all right, so the bottom button is actually going to be right here, and the top button. If you build four up and break the three in between, put a button on it, that's where it's going to be. So we're going to connect those together with a torch, block on top of the torch, another torch, and then a block and a redstone. So you notice that obviously that turns on that redstone and so does that. So the buttons are now tied together. Next we're going to use a slab here, redstone. Sticky piston, we're going to make a monostable circuit, so the sticky piston facing upwards with any kind of solid block on that. Another slab with a repeater set to one. And then that repeater is going to go into any solid block, which will then power that redstone for one tick. Um, sticky piston facing down underneath that, and a redstone block on top of that. And then a block, two blocks down with redstone on it. So when we push the button, it's going to pop that redstone down to the block below, powering all of this. And then when we push the button again, it will unpower. So basically we've got a T flip flop going on there. So let's just test it. Perfect. Alrighty, and both buttons basically act as the same button. Alright, let's put some doors on it. And to do that, we're going to build three blocks out and then place a piston here and here facing that way and then we can break those three blocks. And then the same on this side, here and here, and break that one. And then we're gonna put slime blocks in this arrangement.
Oh, actually, that makes me realize a mistake here. This, uh, this block needs to be obsidian because we don't want it to get moved by these uh, slime blocks. So let's replace that with obsidian. Um, keep in mind that you don't have to use obsidian, but it has to be a block that can't be uh, get stuck to a slime block. So probably like a furnace would work here if you're trying to uh, save on resources, but I'm just gonna use obsidian for, for this example. All right, now to wire up the uh, doors, we're gonna put obsidian here and here and here and here with torches on the sides of all of them and then a torch on top of this one so that means that the doors will always be inverted from each other and that's going to get powered from a redstone wire here that connects them both together let's just connect those and then that's going to get powered from this redstone block just like this so now if we test it again, we'll see that doors close and open. And now we've just got to do some tweaking to the timing. The first tweak to the timing that we want to do is going to be down here. We want to put a torch on this block here with a block on top of that. And then we want to go up, two across, put a block here, redirect this redstone so that it goes down. We're going to put a repeater on two, and then redstone here and here. And what effect that's going to have is it's going to keep these doors closed for longer so that they don't open until the lift reaches the top. If we watch that now, the lift reaches the top and the doors open at pretty much the same time. And the last tweak we want to do is over here. We just want to put blocks here, here, and here with a repeater set to three here, and then redstone dust here and here. And the effect that has is it keeps the lift up for an extra three ticks when we um, push the button to uh, make it go down. And the reason that's required, like if we didn't have that, and we put the doors in here, you'll notice that when the lift goes down, it'll get stuck. So it'll go up okay, but when we go down, it gets stuck. And the reason that is, is because there's still blocks here and that block touching that um, slime block will make it all stick. But by adding an extra three, three ticks, we can uh, time it correctly so that when it does go down, these open early enough that the lift will go down. So at this point, the lift is actually functionally finished. Um, we'll watch it work here. Up works and down works as well. So at this point, it's just a matter of um, you know adding extra blocks to cover up all the wiring and tidy up the outside so we don't see all of the circuitry. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, let's give this a try. Going up. And going down. Cool. Now the only thing I probably would have wanted to improve on this elevator would be the timings on these doors. As you see, you can see a glance of the pistons and slime blocks when the door opens and closes. Um, but this was unfortunately unavoidable because as you saw before, if these weren't timed perfectly, they would get stuck on these slime blocks. And obviously these have to be something that can be pushed by a piston because they need to be pushed by these pistons. So we couldn't use another block, you know, to compensate for the problem of getting stuck. So that was an unavoidable problem, but I don't think it turned out too badly. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. Um, it's just a bit of a glance at the, um, the internals when you, when you open and close the bottom door. Now obviously this is not the most efficient or the most compact or the fastest elevator out there. There's certainly you know, plenty of elevators that go higher or faster, especially with the new slime block uh, mechanics that can bounce you up and, and all of that. But what I was going for here is, as with the previous designs, is 
sort of a realistic elevator that sort of mimics what you might see in real life. And I think it accomplishes that pretty well. Anyway, um, I'm going to put a download link in the description for this um, if you want to check it out, uh, you know, for reference. But um, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.